Today we are going to make a quick and dirty voltage controlled oscillator based on a 555 chip, a few op amps, using a reckless experimentation audio breadboard module. The parts list and circuit schematic can be found in the description below. First let's look at the circuit schematic and see what's going on. The CV from the breadboard module comes in here. The first op amp is a unity gain follower. This removes any effective input impedance. The next stage is a unity gain inverter. This takes the positive CV voltage and inverts it. The third op amp serves as a voltage to current converter. This controls the charge time of the 555 chip and therefore the frequency of the VCO. The gate signal enters the circuit here. It passes through a two transistor voltage shifter. The 555 is held in reset until the gate signal is present. If you don't want to use this feature, just tie pin 4 of the 555 chip to positive. Now we look at the 555. The chip is set up in the A-stable configuration, but instead of a resistor connected to positive charging in the capacitor C1, the voltage to current converter does the job. To create a roughly square wave output, we take an op amp and connect the positive input to the, out of the 555 and the negative input to the control voltage of the 555. This has the effect of causing the output of the op amp to switch polarity depending on the output of the 555. The two resistors and the output of the op amp, the output voltage of the op amp to within a reasonable level. Now let's take a look at how we build the circuit on the breadboard module. Step one, remove the three screws, separate the front plate, and gain easier access to the breadboard. Place a 10 microfarad capacitor near the top of the breadboard, noting the polarity of the capacitor. Then place the chips on the breadboard. The dot on the chips denotes pin 1 and should be on the left side of the breadboard. Place the two op amps towards the top of the board and the 555 near the bottom. Leave a gap between the chips for easier wiring. Next, connect the positive and negative connections of the op amps. The negative rail is on the left, the positive on the right. Do the same for the positive and ground of the 555. Now make the connection from pin 2 to pin 6 on the 555 and one to two on the first op amp. And pin five on the 555 to pin six in the second op amp. Next, the two one microfarad capacitors from pins two and five on the 555 to ground. Now place a 1K resistor between 6 and 7 on the 555. Add the 100K resistors around the op amps per the schematic. The addition of a few short jumpers makes some of the connections easier. Then add the 47K and 470 ohm resistors between the op amp and an open bus. And add another 47K resistor between pins 1 and 2. Now connect that bus with the two resistors to pin 7 and the 555. A pre bent jumper helps. Next, add the transistors to the 3904 to the left on the side of the board and the 3906 to the right side of the board. Now, 
Now attach the ground connection to the 3904 and the positive connection to the 3906. A 10K resistor goes between the collector of the 3904 and the base of the 3906. Next, connect the collector of the 3906 to pin 4 of the 555. A pre bent jumper helps. Now, a 47K resistor from pin 4 of the 555 to ground. and a 100K resistor from the base of the 3904 to an open bus. Then place a jumper from pin 3 on the 555 to pin 5 on the second op amp. The last two parts are a 10K resistor from pin 7 on the second op amp to an open bus and a 4.7K resistor from that bus to ground. Now we can bring back in the front plate. I recommend using masking tape to label the connections. Fold back the wires from the potentiometer and the fourth mono jack. Those will not be needed. Attach the top jack to pin three of the first op amp and the second jack to the 100K resistor on the open bus. And the third jack to the middle of the resistor ladder that connects, that connects to pin seven of the second op amp. Now connect all the ground connections to the ground rail. The front plate can now be screwed back onto the breadboard. Plug any unused connections into empty buses and fold the wires flat. Now we can attach a power cable. The red stripe on a cable goes with the red mark on the breadboard. Initial testing with a current limiting power supply is recommended. Now connect your CV and gate source of choice. Connect the output to an amplifier or another module. And now you're ready to make some sound.